Fantastic. And um, so uh, we are very early in the MSS London. We're delighted to have our opening panel discussion. Uh, we, are, we are very pleased to be joined by Didu, Chief Information Security Officer at Corella. Uh, we're joined by Kevin Fiedler, uh, Chief Information Security Officer at FNZ, uh, Jerome Williamson, Principal Security Architect at Zebia, and Matthew Wilmot, uh, Group Head of Information Security at the Fraser's Group. It's a pleasure to have you all on. Uh, in a nice, nice, crisp, early uh, UK morning. Um, I know, I know, uh, Jerome, you're in the Netherlands, but that's, uh, that's, that's uh, by the by. Um, Every single time we run this event, we are asking this question, what is wrong with this end customer third party relationship? Obviously, you know, later on, we're going to investigate, oh, can the MSP become the attack vector of choice? But what if we ask the question about the top post holder of tomorrow? Is it possible that this top post holder is where the, you know, the, the relationship could be improved? So, you know, our title, Business or Technical Skills, Exploring the Evolution of the CISO or CIO in the Future Context of Working More Effectively with Third Parties. Bit of a mouthful. Um, let me start with you, Kevin, and I'll work my way around. Um, is the top post holder of tomorrow going to have to be a translator? Let's, let's dive into it, because, because I think that could set the tone for the day. So I think that's, it's not just with third parties. Right? I think one of the key roles of CISOs, heads of security, and, and people in security generally is to be able to translate between kind of you know, the business in inverted commas and tech folk, right? So we've got a whole bunch of security things we care about. And you know, if you're in the AppSec world, you know, cross-site scripting, SQL injections, all of that. And we care about that. Well, we care about vulnerabilities and the latest CVSS of, of you know, whatever's wrong with Microsoft or whoever, right? But the business cares about what's the impact of the business. They don't need to know necessarily at you know, the management level or whoever what a SQL injection is. They might need to know the outcome is it's a data breach, but it's the business impact. So the business impact of these things are a data breach or system downtime or regulatory impact or reputational impact, those kind of things. We need to better trans we, we always need to better translate security concerns that we care about into how they impact the business, because that's the only thing that's relevant to your organization, right? How is your organization going to be impacted if the security risk is realized? And therefore, what's the what's the cost impact of that? And then how much effort should we put, we put into fixing it because of how big the impact is? So I think we, we, our role is always as a translator. And it's critically important that we, we, we as a security, whatever industry, get much better and continue to improve in how we, we engage with people outside of our industry um, to help them understand why it's important. So it's always bringing it back to that why. What's the why for them? Yeah, and at any time you're engaging with anyone across your organization, if you can turn out around it, the, how you'll help them. And even things like if I do better um, automated scanning and automated security stuff, I can speed things up. It's that breaks down energy, right? How can I make let you move faster, more safely? So we, we can show how we can enable and improve things as well as just stopping bad things happening. And obviously with an MSS or, or you know, whether that's a SOC or another thing, same thing applies, right? We need to translate to them what's critical to our business. And I think it's a two-way thing. A lot of the issues with, with kind of MSSPs and things are two-way, right? You don't realize how much effort you've got to put into helping them understand your environment, what's important to you, because that's always going to be a struggle when you're not on the ground. And they've got to put the work in to make sure they do that understanding and do alerting and response and, and whatever else that you expect. So I think it's wherever you put us, whether it's talking to security service outside the organization or talking to people in your organization, translation and helping people understand what's important to both sides is always going to be critical. I love it. And, 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 and that, that almost says gatekeeper to me. It, it almost it screams gatekeeper. Um, uh, Dee, uh, let, me, let me come to you. Um, what, what do you think? Because we want this relationship hopefully to be more secure, but 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 is it, it does that make you the gatekeeper that can actually translate whether or not the third party is doing what it's doing, saying what it should be saying? And um, what does that mean, Dee? I think you're on mute, Dee. Not yet. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, um, maybe if you select a different microphone, I'll, I'll come back to you. If, 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 if I just go to Jerome, Jerome, you are an architect, right? So, 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 so this would have a special uh, meaning for you because just as engineers look up to you, I, uh, maybe they don't look up, but you know, they, they look at you. So, 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 so maybe the CISO might look down on you. Um, what, 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 do you, what do you think about this gatekeeper idea? So the gatekeeper overall, um, um, yes, eventually somebody needs to be the gatekeeper. But what it then boils down to is that as a gatekeeper, you indeed need to be able to translate, as Kevin nicely explained that. Uh, but in order to be able to um, 
go through over the vast amount of stuff that needs to be taken care of. Uh, the gatekeeper can't go without its um, uh, workers, basically, because every request, whether from business, whether from a technical perspective or whatever, needs to go through that gate eventually. Um, and the the of course, we can automate things, but automation just only gives indication, doesn't necessarily gives the right um, understanding of whether that's an acceptable risk that we're posing off or whether we're hitting some false positive or whatever. So eventually you need humans uh, or actually a team of humans that can help you to then at least understand what's going on sec security wise. Similarly, you'll possibly need some more people than just the CISO like um, to um, then translate it properly to uh, the business risk appetite because you might feel like, okay, this is... Um, uh, in, in a small business, often you're very tied into the business and it's very easy to understand, okay, this correlates to this or that risk or this correlates to the following compliance things that we really cannot uh, break. So let's move ahead. Um, but um, uh, for many things, once the business grows, basically, it means it's easier to have a, a multitude of people to start investigating, hey, how does this relate to requirement X, Y, or Z? Or more importantly, how does this relate to the risk appetite beyond those requirements? So again, it's um, um, uh, um, I as an architect, I'm just an assistant of the CISO trying to help him out to either find a way through uh, what does this mean technically or what does this mean business-wise. All right, so, so, so then maybe you would require a different skill set, um, but let's get onto that and bundle that together. Dee, are, are, you, are, you, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, absolutely. Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts? Welcome. Um, you know, are, are you the ultimate you. gatekeeper? Uh, I've got mixed views on that. I think that um, we are definitely a trusted advisor. We sit in between, as uh, touching on what everybody's um, kind of spoken about this morning is absolutely key that we translate. Um, but we also need to build that trust and we need to build that trust with the business and we need to build that trust with our suppliers. We need to understand what's going on. And we, from our perspective, everything, again, back to Kevin's point, is is business orientated. We are here to serve and protect what the business is trying to achieve and what we do with the systems and the data across the board and support that. So it's becoming that um, trusted advisor because ultimately the business could decide yes or no. We can decide yes or no. It's a two-way conversation about different decisions that we make. It's about steering that conversation to what's right for the business, what's right for what we are doing, because not everything is always going to fit the same. We can't take a cookie cutter approach. So we have to use our experience and our skill set and understanding how the business operates and what they're trying to achieve and all the other constraints or, or things that come along with that to be able to make those wise decisions. So it's almost in the capacity of a trusted advisor rather than a gatekeeper. Um, in the capacity of we would suggest we go down this route, we would advise doing it this way, here's the risk, here's the benefits, here's why we would do it this way, and getting on everybody on board with that journey. So it, it's really kind of a mixed, a mixed role between translator, advisor, trusted, and gatekeeping to some extent, absolutely. I like that because obviously these uh, VARs and third parties, they see themselves as trusted advisors. So I like how you're the internal trusted advisor. I like, I, I, I like that. We can, we, can, we can run with that. Uh, Matthew, uh, welcome. Um, you know, does, does, does this all matter depending on the industry you're, you're in? Because obviously in retail or in finance or in uh, manufacturing, it's going to have a, a, a markedly different approach. Um, does that does that change your position? Because I want to get to the nub of this skill set, perhaps that this top post holder needs to potentially be technically minded and manage contracts. Mm -hmm. you, what does it all mean, Matthew? Yeah, from from an industry industry perspective, it doesn't matter at all. You still need to be uh, everything that Kevin and and D had said and I, I think D touched a really good point around a gatekeeper a gatekeeper sounds like someone who's going to block certain elements going live um the world we've moved in and in particular in retailer uh, you, you there is not to be a blocker there is an enabler but to make things more secure so the whole trusted advisor is advising the IT function that still wants to remain technical which is fine but then in most organizations um, either information security is a standalone department or re reports out of IT. So it's then that trusted advisor to senior stakeholders to make sure they have enough information to make an informed decision. Um, so 
Uh, I don't think it matters in what industry you work in because of the type of data that we're now collecting. Most retailers uh, are at least having to go down the FCA compliance route, which is not too dissimilar to, to what financial organisations have to do with the, the PRA and, and others. Um, so it's it's um, information security is evolving uh, and it's evolving into a more compliance-based function across multiple sectors. That's, that, that's interesting, yeah, because there, there are more and more onuses, just as there's more requirements of school teachers to do X, Y, and Z in security. Uh, so I, I think next year there will be some additional requirements, at least in the UK. Um, no, I, I, I think that's key. Um, Kevin, though, let's, let's go back to this skill set then, because in previous events, we have wondered if it is fair to ask the CISO to have technical skills on the same level that we have as, you know, tier one engineer constantly finding new exploits uh, always in the sock you know and um, people people have this idea oh the CISO must be that but they also must be uh, a contract manager and um, can, can you can you can you talk us through maybe the skill set of of, of of doing both or doing one or doing neither I mean I think as has been touched on a lot of it probably depends on the organization you're in the maturity of the organization the maturity of the team that kind of thing personally I'd, I'd never expect a, a CISO even to have the kind of same level of, security, of, of abilities as an engineer. I always say to my team, probably one, by the time you're a mid-level engineer in anything, you're better than I am, even though I've got a fairly technical background. So I've kind of got that thin veneer now of some understanding of everything. I can hold my own in at quite a lot of conversations, but I'm not kind of someone who can go and drive tech anymore. Um, but I think for me personally, having a, a tech understanding as well as a business understanding definitely helps because it is that translating role. But what you can do, you know, presumably if you're CISO slash head of security or whatever in an organization, um, you can build a team that is supports where your gaps are, right? So if you have a more technical background, you might hire some more people with strong GRC backgrounds to support you in the kind of more compliance side. If you come more from the GRC function, you should recognize that you haven't got those tech skills and hire some strong tech folk directly reporting to you that can support that. So you need to recognize your weaknesses and, and build a team that helps support those and brings that kind of you know, onto sort of diversity and whatever else to make sure you've got that your diverse thought and, and strong backgrounds in the areas, areas that you need it. Um, and I also think one of the things we touched on to about CISOs, and I think Matthew touched on, mentioned there that it's it's not really industry specific. One of the things um, over at Club CISO that we talk about sometimes is there's building CISOs and there's kind of running CISOs. So some people much prefer coming in when you're kind of first or second CISO and you're building the function. You know, I really enjoy that going from, hey, there's, there's, there's not a proper security function here to, you know, 6, 12, 18, 24 months later, we've built a whole function and it's something to be really proud of that you've built. Other people much prefer the kind of, hey, there's a function there, but how can we kind of gradually mature it and, and, and tweak it and improve it? And that's more the kind of run type person. So for, for me, also what some discussions we've been having are, um, is, a, is a two CISOs rather than being industry specific, more kind of build versus run kind of CISOs. Um, and that, that might be a distinction that's worth looking into as opposed to kind of, are you different if you're in finance or retail or whatever? Because apart from different regulations, we're all facing largely similar attacks. You might get more attacks in finance because there's money, but fundamentally, the, especially over the internet, you know, insider threats, phishing, you know, hacking, whatever, they're, they're going to be the same whatever industry you're in to, to some extent. I love that. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna run with that term, build versus run, because because it, okay. As a, as a neutral observer, I have noticed um, a debate uh, between the technically minded and the non technically minded, and this debate is quite lively. Um, anyway, uh, Jerome, uh, on 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 that subject, do you think that perhaps if uh, we get more run type CISOs managing these court, you know relationships with third parties? That will open the way, not just for a build CISO, but a super architect. And, 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 and maybe just as you've got this uh, poacher gamekeeper scenario, CIO, CISO, so, 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 so you'll have something similar with a super architect. Now, you are an architect, so this is why I'm sort of coming to you. I don't really think there is something like a super architect. In, oh. uh, uh, eventually, we all have to do this together. Um, because it's the more an organization grows, the more third party vendors you work with, the more things you get in there, the harder it becomes to keep an overview. Uh, so it's all about collaboration. Um, similarly, if it comes to uh, 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 building or running or, or being a building CISO or a running CISO, um, uh, um, even if you 
uh, basically swap people. The most important thing overall is that collaboration and making sure that the knowledge sticks with the organization. So what we what we see basically from an architecture perspective, and I think that's good to to to, to include from that uh, uh, perspective, is that one thing that's really key is making sure that you keep knowledgeable as a CISO department, whether you're the head of that or not, um, and being able to uh, um, experience the impact of your decisions becomes very important. So overall, I don't think there is not, of course, you need somebody who leads it like the CISO, uh, but overall, if it comes to whoever supporting them, I don't think there's a superhero in the team. I think more importantly, there's people together making sure that whoever comes in next as a CISO can pick up where the builder or the previous runner uh, 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 jumped off. Um, that doesn't mean we need to write Bibles, just means we need to make sure we document whatever was decided, that we document properly what the impact of that was, and that we really document our lessons learned, especially from a CISO perspective, because he eventually talked to the business and, you know, experienced it. I think that overall is way more important than um, uh, trying to create those um, sometimes even somewhat artificial leaders or, uh, or superheroes uh, uh, worshipped by an organization in that sense. Okay. No, no, it's um, it's good. And there's no I in team, and except see, so um, someone someone made that joke before. Um, uh, Matthew, Matthew, if, if if then we're trying to build this super team, and this is the MSS London, we're looking at this relationship between the third party and the end customer. How how do we do that? Um, as a top post holder, is it your job to sense check that they are not hoodwinking you? Or is it your job to bring them into the fold? I mean, I, I know that's a little bit aggressive, but, but how can we manage this uh, stakeholder relationship? Yeah, so, so Kevin, again, like, like touched on it. Um, for me, um, like in, in most industries, like obviously we, we need to use third parties. I, I've got a consulting background as well. So I, I spent five and a half years working in the top four um, delivering services and, organizations do have a need to use these third parties sometimes just to speed up um like getting things over the line but most organizations if, if uh, the organization i've, I've come into now phrases is, is is really at its infancy um so i'm having to look to see what technology is there what technology i'm happy with what i want to replace and then the ones i want to replace whether i want to recruit internally against outsourcing some of some of that um, relationship and I'm in kind of like a hybrid approach so I'm building out a SOC at the moment where I've got strong capabilities internally both um, from a technology perspective but also um, from, from personnel internally but I still know if I want a 24-7 SOC um, I'm not going to build that capability overnight so I'm, I'm heavily leaning on trusted partners to um, support me in the journey which, which isn't going to be a short journey either and uh, in answering the question in, in short, um, it, it's down to me to do that assessment. It, it's not just about me thinking that the right technologies are in place. It's whether I can work with that third party, whether that third party is going to offer the service uh, that, that I want and whether I've got that rapport and relationship with that third party. So I don't want it just to be, here you go, here's SLAs, here's KRIs, KPIs that I want to work towards. And if you don't work towards them, I'm, I'm going to like throw, throw the stick at you. I, I want things to be uh, a, a, a two-way party and, and kind of like have an extended team rather than look at it as, as a, a, I'm, I'm using third party or outsourcing. I, I want any outsourcer to think they are part of my overall team. I like that. And, 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 and you mentioned the SLAs, you know, if, if you have to go back to the SLAs, then something's gone wrong. Um, 100%, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I try not to go back to them, but like I say, if, if, if I'm looking at the contracts, I'm looking for, um, for, for issues or, or problems which I, I can't resolve through just a normal conversation. Yeah, no, no, it's, that's, that's very important. Um, D, uh, then, 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 then let's look, because obviously we're overturning this stone and we're saying, is the key to a better relationship in this top post holder of tomorrow? Um, we, we could call them CISO, we could call them. Um, CSO maybe I don't know. Um, what what is this skill set then that 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 looks at managing contracts? That do CSOs have to go to law school? And um, what what's the specific school that helps them um, manage third party vendor relationships? That's a, a really good question. Again, with being a to some extent with legalities, understanding your security schedule. 
um, actually just being really clear on what you want relationship with your partners, wherever they are, ensuring that they're clearly defined um, and that you as an organization understand what you want and you've got that clearly defined. And then that is articulated clearly with your, with your um, partner, whoever that may be. Um, and having that stipulated in, in your contractual agreements is one level. I think there's another level of it of just being human and being able to get to the crux of relationship, which is what Matthew just touched upon, and that partnership and being transparent and honest with one another about what you can and can't achieve. I think the biggest fall down in relationships between um, any organization is where there's been a lack of transparency and honesty. You can say, do you know what, I can give you this requirement, but these aren't there available today, but they're coming up and they're on this roadmap and we can bring this to you in this way and that to you in this way. And I think where relationships fall down is that transparency upfront um, maybe hasn't been there, which means that you can then start questioning whether this is the right way, move, or whatever you're doing. And that's when contracts start coming out and SLAs start being you know, reviewed. It's actually about, I think the key is being human, being honest, being transparent, um, not trying to sell more in the pipeline that isn't coming up and isn't available today, and, and actually showing focus what you do have to then say, look, we can do this for you today, and we'll work with you to get to X. We all we're all on a journey, um, and it's both journey together. I think is the key there. I love it. It's a it's 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 a journey, and 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 so you know our audience, which is part end customer, part uh, third party, they they they'll, they'll enjoy that. You know, they 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 want this uh, this this journey to come together because it's no good for an MSP to constantly turn over. Uh, clients every every second right um but but then conversely kevin what do you it's almost like this is a great platform you have the opportunity to say i want or i wish you 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 third parties would know what would you like this third party of the future to sort of look like now we've heard trusted partner we've heard you know kindness and and appreciation um what would you like them to do because they're forever coming to you saying kevin I have a new sparkly box that I want to bundle. It's only another million pounds per subscription. Or what, you know, um, what would you want them to do rather than your relationship with them? So I think, you know, as, as Dee touched on, it's, it's very much that two-way street. And to, to give, give vendors a little bit of credit, some, some, some fall lands on the side of consumers of solutions as well. So let's say if, if, you're, if you're not mature enough to be able to, to get all your logs to them or tell them what your problems are, or what you need solved, um, they're not going to be able to do a good job as an MSP, for example, um, of providing you a service because you haven't given them all the data they need to do a good service. So it's definitely that two-way street and you both need to be honest about where you are and how mature you are. But in terms of, I guess, for, for vendors, it's, it's um, yeah, be honest about what, what, you, what you can do, but also focus on how you solve problems. So I don't want another shiny box. I want to minimise how many shiny boxes I've got because everything I put in, I have to manage, other teams have to manage, it needs patching, maintenance, configuration. Yeah, there's some stat of like, I don't make up numbers, but like 80% of the security products aren't configured properly that have been bought, right? So you're better off having two or three things really well configured than 10 things that are badly configured, right? So so I think it's talk about, talk about the business problems you solve and the organizational problems you solve, not how good your shiny box is. So what does it solve for me? How does it make my life better? What other tech does it replace? So if you're saying buy widget X, can I get rid of widgets A, B, and C? That, that kind of stuff. So talk about what, what, what you do for me, how you solve the problems, how you make people's life easier, how you reduce how many agents I need on the endpoint, but still provide the same service. Give me, give me things that actually really benefit my organization. And maybe you know, and ask what my challenges are. And if, if they don't align, stop emailing me. You know, I've got, you, you get people and they just get email. Oh, you didn't reply, email. Oh, you didn't reply, passive aggressive email. Do you not care about security then? That kind of stuff. Just don't, because you're ne never going to get my business. So be honest about what you do, talk about kind of the business things you solve. And if I don't reply after a while, stop harassing me, maybe do it again after three, six months Go, it's the time right now. So I'm not going to mind you contacting every now and then, but if I get daily or weekly emails from you, that's a bad thing, right? It's not, you know, it's not going to do, do well. Uh, and the honesty, yeah, just, I know we've all said it, but the honesty thing is really important. We all know, especially with smaller companies and newer companies, they're on the same journey as us, right? But if, if you tell me you do X, Y, Z, and some of those things aren't there yet, 
yeah, I've done, I've had vendors come on and say, come, come on board and they said, oh yeah, we do all of this stuff, it's all good, or it's coming in a couple of months. And a year later, it hasn't happened. And I will still talk about how bad they are sort of three or four years down the line, because it's just sticks in your craw that you kind of made a mistake bringing this thing on. So it's really bad for them and their reputation doing that. But if they say, hey, look, we've got this platform, it does these things, but we're not AD integrated yet. And we haven't got this yet, but, but it is on our roadmap. We're hoping for it to be in the next six months. And be honest, they were hoping rather than it will be if you're not absolutely guaranteeing it. So it's set out, the store is set out. We do these things for you. Here's our roadmap. It's realistic but we're not promising these dates and i can come on board bring you on board with open eyes knowing that's exactly what you're doing i know what i'm getting and how i can shape it so yeah be honest don't harass people and focus on not your shiny widget but what what business and organizational problems you solve and how you make life better for me or my colleagues in my business sorry a bit of a ramble there but that's... no 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 it's, it's full it's full of great nuggets and and, and and wisdom i love it um and obviously those wonderful passive aggressive emails uh, i do get them um <laughs> A, a, a Canadian MSP decides that I am exactly the right customer for them. Anyway, um, uh, or client. Uh, Jerome, w- what about you? You know, where, where can we go today with this event? Obviously, this is the beginning. We're trying to set a tone um, and, and, and we're trying to sort of say, well, th- the relationship could be improved in these ways. Uh, w- what are your thoughts? Maybe with a specific reference to what you'd want the third party to look like as well, like uh, Kevin. I think it starts with honesty, like uh, Kevin already nicely pointed out. Um, when you explain a little bit about your stack that you're running, because uh, you know every organization chooses something different. There's so many ways to get compute nowadays. There's so many ways to optimize that. Let's be honest about uh, whether you support the stack. Let's start with that. So at least a technical, simple thing like, in, hey, we have this or we don't have this. If we don't have this, whereas my main computer is running over there, then maybe we can stop the conversation right there. It's nice to remain friendly to each other other but please don't try to sell something that means that that we have to redo our stack completely to you know be monitorable by you or whatever it starts with honesty and what you can support and capabilities and um uh indeed in in the conversation overall uh next of course that's the intake but then of course the support is the very next phase um support doesn't mean uh, keep talking to us to see if you can sell more licenses support means evaluation of how well are we doing um, and that is in uh, how many vulnerabilities that we found, of course, that's a nice pointer, but it's more like, okay, um, does, for instance, if you have some sort of scanning solution or an import monitoring solution impact our application performance in a certain way, or does it impact uh, uh, the way we can do business or the way the business can extend its business? Um, uh, that's often overlooked because we start off with, hey, now we have monitoring, now we have capabilities, but then it starts to become rather painful at the point that we have to, um, uh, you know, tailor it towards the new business needs or tailor it towards the stack migration and stuff like that. And that's where we would like to have that ongoing conversation so that um, if it's really required, if if we have to move as a customer to something new technology-wise or we really rapidly change the way we do business, then we either need to be able to carefully say to our partner, to our third parties, as in, hey, yes, you can join us because on this journey because we're still compatible or let's, um, you know, separate because we're clearly at some other point than you are. And then the third party compatibility should not be um, uh, the main point to stop the business from changing or to stop us from, or to delay us from leaving an archaic stack, which uh, makes it harder for us to find good tech people to maintain it. I like it. I like it. No, great sentiment. And hopefully, you know, great message for the day. Um, we, we're sort of out of time, but let me, let me quickly go to Dee and then Matthew. Um, D, your your hope for today, if, if if you have a message, what what would you hope today could try and achieve? I think the key here is uh, just to loop back to trusted advisor. We are putting our name against the partners that we are bringing in, and we are therefore on the hook with our organisations for the partnerships that we choose choose. And so therefore in choosing our partners, that's where that honesty, integrity, transparency and truthfulness becomes the absolute key because we can or cannot have all the services, that's absolutely fine. But we cannot sit in front of our business and deliver a service that we don't even understand or haven't been delivered in the right way and then stand by it in the future. And that's probably where that disconnect will come. So it's a case of 
actually just come with honesty and integrity integrity and transparency and just remember that as much as they want to be our trusted partner we're our business's trusted partner and we can't put our name against things that aren't going to transpire to be what they should be basically i love it yeah trusted advisor of the trusted advisor and and putting putting against your name i think that brings it home um matthew what, what's your hope for what we might be able to achieve today i know i know we're sort of over time but um yeah. what, what's your message yeah i'll be brief um so we're all on the journey and we're all on the journey where we need to probably support each other the, the ecosystem of, of information security is ever changing and i think people that are on the good side of, of uh, infosec all need to can work collaboratively to support each other um in just touching on some of the points it, it is frustrating receiving uh, constant chases from um, uh, from, from uh, suppliers, but also uh, having stepped on the other side of the fence, I make every effort I can. If someone messages me just to say, "Is this of interest to you?" I, I, I just give them out of courtesy. No, now now it's not the right time. Maybe let's let's speak again. Um, everyone does have a job and a part to play in this. So I, I, I think just the courtesy of, of just a quick one liner back to people is always quite helpful because that could actually stop the chasing and, and stop people actually reaching out to you on, on a regular basis and hopefully reduce some of that frustration. So it's all going back to, to what we've said, working collaboratively, working together. We're all on the journey. Let's let's make this a success. Love it. All right. Well, um, great, great sentiments to start the day. Let's uh, give our fantastic panel a great round of applause. I found the virtual applause button. Uh, thank you to Kevin, uh, Jaron, D, and Matthew. Um, we, we look forward to seeing you throughout the day. Please do pop in on Discord. We're going to have some interesting things going on throughout the day. Um, but, uh, but yes, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, love it. So...